Hey gang, we're here at the Ashland Fly Shop. We are back with a fishing report. I know it's been quite a while. It has been an absolutely crazy couple, few weeks. Um, fires and warm weather, and it's just been uh, it's just been pretty pretty crazy. Wind storms. Um, so hopefully the worst is over and we're moving into our favorite time of year and we've got some updates for you for the fishing in our region. So we'll take it from here. So yeah, let's talk about the Rogue. Can't talk about the Rogue without talking about the Rogue Valley and it's hard to talk about that without talking about the fires that we just experienced. So we've gotten a lot of calls from a lot of our customers expressing uh, concern and, and uh, boy, we, we sure appreciate that. That really uh, means a lot to us. So thank you everyone for reaching out. Um, we weathered it well. Um, you know, most of our, our staff uh, um, had a pretty okay time with it. Uh, a couple people um, spent a lot of crazy time <laughs> running around. Um, and but it was a pretty wild experience for every one of us here and um, pretty pretty tough for our area so if you haven't noticed we've been doing some relief efforts raising money for relief efforts in the valley which has been great and again uh, a lot of uh, very grateful to everyone who's been uh, a part of our raffles and stuff we've raised a, a quite a bit of money in the last um, in the last week or so I think close to ten thousand dollars which is awesome so we certainly appreciate that and we're still pretty focused on that right now, but we're shifting our focus uh, to fishing and it's a good time to do that because um, the fishing is start, start to be, starting to be pretty good on the Rogue. So we're stoked. So we're gonna talk about the Rogue uh, mainly is what we're gonna talk about now because it's just starting to you know, kind of really pick up and be consistent, which is very typical for this time of year with the, um, the flows dropping throughout September. And uh, we have, you know, very low flows out there. I think it's like 780 out of the dam, 1100 or so at Dodge, 1200, you know, which is, which is very low. A lot of exposed rock out there, you know, that really, you know, t makes the fish kind of really congregate in certain areas. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that, but, uh, but good water temps. Um, we've had um, we've had smoke in the valley. We've had little smoke the last few days, though, which is nice. So we've had some overcast. We had a little bit of rain, um, and all that sort of congealing around uh, the flows dropping. And so so definitely have been some good fishing. We've seen a nice number of fish show up and have had good consistent uh, fishing in the last week or so since we've been kind of you know paying more attention to it. Um, so let's talk about if you're out there in a boat, you definitely want to pay attention to the river being as low as it is. The section between Dodge Bridge and Tuvel becomes pretty tricky with a, a hard boat. And that Rattlesnake Rapid is pretty tough uh, with the exposed rock this time of year. So if you're coming to the area, you're bringing a boat or a raft, uh, you definitely want to be tuned in to uh, the amount of exposed rock that's out there now, um, but that does, um, it does put you in front of a, a potentially better fishing uh, if you're able to um, bounce around from spot to spot. So that's a good, that's a good bet for you. Um, if you're walking in the handful of spots that we really enjoy like Tuvel Park and upstream rogue elk and places like that have been producing pretty well so 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 good fishing happening there um, fish are pretty well spread out we do really like that tuvel uh, park stretch right now from the fishers ferry boat ramp uh, up to about shady cove there's a, a lot of good fishing to be done in there right now our guides are really running that stuff a lot in there but now also grants pass and the area down there will start to come in to focus as well now that the water's lower and a bit colder. So fishing down there becomes an option. We haven't heard too much from down there, but I'm sure we will start because that can be uh, very good down there as well. Um, so if you're nymph fishing, this is your time of year. This is it. This is the time to be out there. The fish get really congregated in certain runs. It's not really a secret and they get kind of stuffed in there. So, um, so nymphing right now can be a very good bet. Um, all the same cast of characters we always talk about as far as flies, you know, your Otis bugs, improved Otis bugs, heavier weighted stone flies. We are in fly fishing only season, so you can't use split shot, but you know, use your heavy fly for a point fly or top fly. 
and that'll do the trick for you. So um, larger stone fly, size four or six is, is a good bet. Um, those will work really well. And then below that, what we like to use are smaller nymphs, uh, size 10s, 12s, and sometimes we'll even go smaller than that. Um, and lots of flies can work. Um, now's a good time to use egg flies. There are some salmon out there. They will be spawning very soon. So egg flies are a good bet as a bottom fly. But aside from that, just small nymphs, copper johns, red copper johns, you know, the usual suspects uh, work very well. Some kind of lightning bug or flashy bug or something like that. Flashback pheasant tail, you know, that kind of stuff can work very well. So, um, so that's a great rig as usual um, on the Rogue for nymphing. Swinging flies, we are after it out there. Swinging flies, we've had good consistent results the last week. Uh, a lot of people using Scandi lines, uh, fishing light, small traditional flies on real slow sinking tips. Um, I got a really nice fish on um, a little muddler kind of fly um, a couple of days ago. So, um, so those flies are good and working well in the Rogue um, right now. But you can also fish a light tip and a larger fly as well. You can also fish like a, you know, a hot, hot hair, hot head type of a fly. Uh, sylvanator uh, doesn't have to be a real big klamath uh, klamath intrude or something something in that kind of um, you know size four six size is really good and then we'll start to push that size a bit as we have consistently cooler weather um, so yeah here we are it's prime time on the rogue this is the time to fish we've had to divert our focus away for a bit but we're uh, really on it now all, all our guides are fishing um, and uh, looks to be a pretty good season. Um, so thank you for your patience between reports. And if you want any more up-to-date information on the Rogue or anything, just, uh, just give us a call here at the shop. We'll talk a little bit about the holy water. Um, very good time to be up there as well. Again, very low flows. Um, you're right at that 780 uh, CFS coming out of the dam there. It's also gonna be very cold. It's gonna be below 50 degrees up there for sure as far as the water temp. So expect the fish to be um, a little lethargic, but, um, but they should be getting a little wound up for fall and, um, and feeding and stuff. So I would be poking around up there with streamers. Um, we do get a little bit of October caddis activity, so that could be okay. But what we'll start to see is a few more little mayfly hatches showing up like blueing olives, things like that. We'll start to see those come back a little more consistently. So Going up in the evenings up there will be good, um, but fishing in the afternoon and stuff with streamers is going to start picking up, especially if we have a little bit of overcast like we've been having. So, um, so the holy water I foresee as being a pretty darn good bet, you know, for the next month or so. And it gets pretty quiet up there when the steelhead are around, so um, so it can be be a nice place to fish without a lot of folks around. Um, if you really want to pursue uh, pursue trout up there, there's some, as you know, there's some really nice fish there. So. Um, so yeah, have at it. Uh, the North Umpqua took a bit of a beating uh, up there with these uh, latest round of fires, unfortunately. Um, definitely some uh, uh, good losses, uh, loss of structure up there. I know Steamboat and the Dogwood came through just barely, I think. So we're really happy to hear that. There were some kind of tragic losses. Um, Frank Moore and his wife lost their home up there. So we're really, uh, it's a, a terrible loss, but um, so yeah. So, so I think the highway is just reopened in the last um, couple days. Now, I don't know if they want people up there fishing. I, I think there's probably still a lot of crews and fire activity. So I don't really have an up to the minute report. You might call the Dogwood or call Steamboat in and see what they have to say uh, about that as far as an up to, up to the minute um, report there. But um, I would expect, you know, similar low flows and, and uh, the fishing before the fires was pretty challenging. So I would imagine it's, it's uh, still similar. Um, but um, that's, that's what we know uh, about the North. Oh, the Klamath, I got another big burner down there um, and pretty typical for this time of year. So we're watching that pretty closely. I did get some uh, troubling news. It sounds like the National Forest is um, 
uh, closed at this point, and so that could influence the fishing down there this fall, depending on how long that stays. I do believe it's closed for river use as well, so boat ramps, um, and they don't want to see people on the rivers there either. So we're going to pay attention to that really closely because that's going to influence a lot of, uh, we really like to fish down there later in the fall. Um, so we'll be watching that pretty closely, but just know if you're trying to bomb up and fish the middle Klamath around Happy Camp or Syad or somewhere in there, um, you definitely want to try to get a hold of a fish and wildlife office in California or something, see if you can get an update on what's happening. Um, that'll be, that'll be pretty important. So, uh, but we'll also be trying to stay pretty in, t in tune with that. Um, as we go into these uh, later months. And I don't know how they'll determine to open that stuff, but I'm sure, we'll, I'm sure we'll find out. But we're really looking forward to Fish the Klamath. I'm sure we'll all get a crack at it. So we'll just see, we'll just pay attention and see, uh, see when that's safe to go back down there. Um, great time of year to fish the Klamath Basin. Um, Williamson, a lot of, we turn our attention away from it a lot this time of year, but it can be very, very good fishing up there. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, Klamath Lake can also be very good fishing um, as an alternative to fishing uh, the valley here and fishing steelhead. Um, so that's, that's a good bet if you want to do something like that. We probably can dig up a, a day for you up there uh, to get out or if you're looking to do that yourself. Probably quiet, quiets down a bit up there and it can be a nice, um, you know, a nice float and some good fishing to be had. So um, something to do for sure. And last but not least, Northern California, honestly, pretty out of touch with that right now, but I would imagine um, it's pretty much go time. Of course, this national forest closure, or however they have this um, put together, will certainly influence some of that, possibly some of the McLeod fishing. So maybe make some calls before you kind of uh, commit to the drive time to get there. but. Uh, but there should be should be some some fishing to be had uh, upper Sacramento Hat Creek that stuff can all fish really really well in the fall so we'll stay tuned into that and and keep you updated and all those shops down there and guides and stuff are good to tune into as well the fly shop always uh, knows quite a bit about that as well as um, um, as well as the Ted Fay fly shop they're always a good resource too so um, should be some good stuff to do. Uh, we sure appreciate you tuning in and thank you for your patience and we will talk to you soon. <laughs> Thanks a lot.